Hi friends, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel, Life Between Words. Today I'm bringing you another Top 5 Wednesday. The theme for this week's Top 5 Wednesday is Favorite Mothers. I have a feeling that this is in preparation for Mother's Day, which is about a week away. As always, Top 5 Wednesday is a Goodreads group created by Ginger Reed Laney, although it's now being hosted by Sam from Thoughts on Tones. I'll link all that information down below. I've been so excited to do this Top 5 Wednesday. I think it's a great one. As I was trying to come up with my favorite mothers in books, I realized that they're actually aren't a lot of great representations of mothers in books. I understand why maybe mothers aren't don't always play an integral role in books because what better way to create instant conflict or room for character development than taking away their the maternal figure in the story. So I understand why there aren't always great mothers, but I also know that the stories that do have great mothers end up being some of my very favorite books. Almost every one of the books that I'm about to mention are some of my all-time favorites. These aren't in any particular order in terms of, you know, my most favorite mother to my least favorite mother. They're just some of my very favorites. Coming in at number five is Ma from the Little House on the Prairie series, written by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And I wanted to mention Ma because she is a strong, strong lady. In the books, Pa is a wandering soul and he drags his family all over God's green earth and Ma, bless her heart, goes along with him and cares for her family. The places that they go to are uninhabited wilderness, basically, everywhere they go. And Ma is such a trooper. I can't believe she puts up with that. It's not like they needed to move. It's not like his job required it. He just had a restless spirit and he wanted to, you know, explore the territory. You know, when you're a kid and you're reading the Little House on the Prairie, you don't really think about Ma and what she dealt with. Ma makes their little world special, and she did a lot. She is one tough cookie. Coming in at number four, Marilla from Anne of Green Gables. I have a few copies of Anne of Green Gables. This is my very, very, very special edition, printed by the Folio Society, and it, it comes in this really nice folio case. And it's cloth bound, and the picture on the front is hand painted and I love it so much. This is one of the most expensive books I probably own and also one of my most treasured books. But Marilla from Anne of Green Gables, one of my most favorite mother figures. Of course, she's not Anne Shirley's real mother, but she and her brother Matthew adopt Anne into their life and they become parents to her. Marilla's transformation over the course of especially this first book is so wonderful to see. She starts out kind of crusty, at least on the outside, and Anne worms her way into Marilla's heart and softens her from the inside out. Anne and Marilla work on each other in wonderful ways. I love seeing the development of Marilla as a character over the story and Marilla and Anne's relationship together. It's so special. At number three, I've put The Secret Life of Bees, and I don't have just one character in this book. There's a whole set of women in this book who become really great mother figures to our main character, Lily. This book takes place in 1964, and it follows the story of Lily, whose real mother died under mysterious circumstances, although her father blames her for her mother's death. In 1964, her nanny, and also sort of her stand-in mother, Rosaline, insults a group of racists. Rosaline and Lily end up fleeing and finding asylum with a group of black women in Tiburon. Yeah, to burn South Carolina. All of these women end up surrounding Lily and becoming her surrogate mothers. It's about a group of fierce and protective women who all end up sort of mothering each other in different ways, and it's quite a lovely book. It's hard to find good mothers in books. It's even harder to find good mothers in adult books. And so I tried really hard to include some adult books, and this is one of the ones that I thought of. At number two is Matilda. In the story of Matilda, we meet both one of the worst possible mothers and also one of the best possible mothers. The worst possible mother being her real mother, who doesn't care a whit about Matilda, and then Miss Honey, her teacher, who ends up taking Matilda under her wing and calling out all of Matilda's gifts. Matilda, of course, is about a little girl who loves to read. She learns to read very early, and then as she grows up, she goes to school where she meets Miss Honey and the Trunchbull. The Trunchbull and her parents treat Matilda terribly, and of course then we have Miss Honey, who is the one bright spot in Matilda's life other than the world of books. This was one of my all-time favorite books, 
as a kid and it continues to be an enduring favorite of mine. And at number one, Roxana in Peace Like a River. I have not heard anyone talk about Peace Like a River on booktube. When people ask me what my favorite book is, I always have a really hard time answering because how can you choose a favorite book? It's one of the most difficult questions. But if I have to choose a favorite, I often will say Peace Like a River. I love this book so much and I feel like it's really a hidden gem. This book is about a little boy named Reuben whose mother died when he was very young. He has, Reuben has a younger sister named Swede and an older brother named Davy. At one point in the book, Davy ends up running away trying to evade the law and his father takes Swede and Reuben off to find him. It's kind of a road trip adventure story about a father's love. There's also lots of elements of redemption and miracles and faith. Those are some of the themes explored in the book and it's written beautifully. It's a quiet book but tells a lovely story in the book as they're traveling to find Davy. Reuben's family runs into a woman named Roxana and becomes a surrogate mother to Swede and Reuben as they travel. You fall in love with her. It's been a long time since I've read it and uh, even now her character as well as all the other characters really stick with me. They have sunk into my soul and I love them with my whole heart. I just wanted to mention two runner-ups as well. The first being Molly Weasley because how can you talk about a mother figure and not talk about Molly Weasley who is one of the fiercest mothers ever written in a book. She loves her children so much and will fight to the death for them. I also wanted to mention another middle grade book. This one is called Savvy. It's by Ingrid Law. This one is also sort of a road trip story. It follows our main character, Mississippi Beaumont, whose family calls her Mibs. When everyone in the Beaumont family turns 13, they get a Savvy, which is basically a magical power. At the beginning of this book, Mib's father is in a car crash and she is convinced that her savvy is going to be able to save her father. We meet a couple mother figures in this book. First is her real mother. Her savvy is that she's practically perfect. But when Mibs is talking to her mom about being perfect, her mom says that she's not really perfect, she just has a knack for getting things right. We also meet Lil in the book who takes them under her wing. She is also a wonderful, lovely, loving character that is just full of heart. And that's it. Those are my top five plus a couple extra favorite mothers. Let me know who some of your favorite mothers in literature are. I'd love to know because I really feel like there's a lack of great mothers in, in books. Let's have a discussion about it in the comment section. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. I'm so glad that you stopped by again today, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, this is also a signed first edition that my husband got for me. It's a very special book to me. Let me see if I can show you the signature. There's his name, Leaf Anger. My signed first edition copy. Woo!